Hi everyone, Sean Kennedy here from the YouTube channel Java SE Certification Training. In this video, I'd like to look at one of the self-test questions from the Bates and Sierra book. It's from chapter 6 and it's question 12 and it's about advanced encapsulation. I will give you the answer to the question and then I'll go through it in detail in NetBeans where I'll expand upon it. So here we have a class, got private string name, private array list. There's the constructor initializing the array list. There's a get name, returning the name. And there's an add to list, list.add, and there's a get list returning the list. Which lines of code, if any, break encapsulation? Well, line three is private, that's okay. Four is okay. Five is a constructor, that's no problem there. Seven is okay. Now, ideally, you make them public, um, but that's all right. Line 9 is a problem, and that's the answer to this question. Okay, line 9 is a problem because you are returning an array list. Line 7 isn't a problem because that is an immutable object. String is immutable, and we'll see that now when I do the diagram why it's okay to simply return the name. But when you're returning a list, which is an array list, which is a mutable object, that's going to be a problem. So line nine is the problem. Let's look at the NetBeans code that I have. So this is the NetBeans code. There's the private string name, it's immutable. There's the array list list, which is mutable. There's the constructor, and I'm initializing the name to fortress, which wasn't done in the question, just so we'll have a sample of both to show you why one works and the other does not. There's the get name, there's the add to list, and then there is the, the line that breaks encapsulation. And then I'll, this is what should be done. If it's properly encapsulated, you would return a new array list based on the data of the existing array list. And we'll see how that works and why that works. So here I'm going to create a new fortress F. Okay, so I'll just diagram that and we'll go step by step. So I'll go over to here, I'm going to create a new fortress which will have an array list and it will have a name set to fortress. So here's F referring to the object. In the object, we have name and list. Name is a string and it's initialized to fortress. And then list refers to an array list. So list is referring to an array list which holds integers. Okay, next thing I'll do is I'll declare a string nm in main and I'll say, okay, that is f.getName. Okay, so what that means is that nm and name refer to the same string object. So I'm going to do that line now. I'll do it in a different color. NM is a string that refers to the same object that name refers to. Okay, that's what that line did. Then we come along and we output NM, which is fortress. As strings are immutable, when we change NM, name is untouched. So I go along and I change nm to Sean. So what's happening there is Java realizes, oh, that's an immutable object. I cannot change that. So what it does is it just refers nm to a different string object and Sean is inside it. That is what's done on that line there. nm is assigned Sean. So the fortress string object the name is referring to is 
safe from external change because it's immutable. And I prove that then by saying, okay, let's output f.get name again and its fortress because it hasn't changed. Now let's look at the list. The above shows that immutable objects are safe once they are private, and it is private up here. However, mutable objects are not. So I go along and I add three integers to this particular list. So essentially what that is like is you're going to have that type of idea. And each one of these are integers because it's wrapped. The one, the two, and the three are wrapped. You end up with objects. So there's three of them there. One, two, and three are each integer objects. The circle represents an object. Then I go along and I create a local F list reference inside main, and it's the f.get list. And basically this F list, I'll use blue again to, to contrast the difference. F list and list refer to the same array list object. So that basically means I've got an F list referring to the same array list object that list is referring to, much like NM was originally referring to the same string fortress that name was. All okay so far. I output the list that F list is looking at, one, two, three, correct. Now, as array lists are mutable, and because we have not encapsulated it properly, when we change f list here, list is changed. So when I go along and I say f list dot add with four, it goes along and it does the following. And that's another integer object there. And then when I output f dot get list, I get one, two, three, four. So in other words, main, if you want to consider this is the class, question 12 is the client of Fortress, has been able to change the private internal state of Fortress, which is not the way encapsulation works. Okay, that is not the way encapsulation works. If this line was uncommented and that line was commented out, what would happen is you would get a new array list back on this particular line here, the get list. An F list would refer to a completely separate object which would have the same data, one, two, and three. And then any change made to it would be to this separate object completely. So that's what you need to do to properly encapsulate. That's advanced encapsulation. Your mutable objects have to be defensively copied as, they, as it's called. So if you liked that video, please click like. If you'd like further content, please subscribe and feel free to leave comments below. Thanks very much.